Have you ever seen a good looking guy and just thought to yourself, wow, he could pull off anything? Well, think again, because there are some fashion choices that even the most attractive men should avoid at all costs. And I know I'm picking on some of you guys here right now, but look, Dior Sauvage is going to be number one on this list. Here's the thing, guys. It smells really good. It's amazing. But so many guys smell like Dior Sauvage out there. It's just not unique enough. You're going to smell like every other guy out there. It's interesting because being too good, too popular, ultimately is what killed Dior Sauvage for most men. By the way, I'm talking about the normal Dior Sauvage, not Dior Sauvage Elixir. This is a new one, and most guys don't know about this one yet. The next thing that no matter how good looking you are, you should not be wearing nowadays is skin tight jeans. Those skinny jeans that literally show everything from your veins to your calves to things that we do not want to see. Here's the problem with skinny jeans. They looked very cool for a little while, from like 2016 to 2018, 2019, they were cool. And I've been thinking about this one. Why are guys still trying to wear skinny jeans today? And I think I know the answer. From 2015 to 2019, skinny jeans were it. You'd go outside and every single guy was wearing skinny jeans. And that also coincided with the time when men actually started caring about fashion and caring about what they look like. So a lot of guys did their research. They found skinny jeans on Pinterest. They found skinny jeans on my channel amongst many other channels here on YouTube and decided to wear skinny jeans. But here's the problem. They were actually a fad. They were never a classic style. They were doomed from the beginning. The next thing that you will not see good looking guys wearing is designer logos everywhere. You know those guys that just wear stamped logos all over their shirts, pants, shoes, watch. I mean, everything has a big logo on it. That just makes it look like you're trying to show off your status, right? You're, you're coming across as shallow, materialistic, and it also shows a lack of personal style. Some people believe that relying on designer logos are a key component of their outfits, of their style, but that's not a strong sense of personal style. You're just relying on those brands to show that, hey, I got money. Hey, I can dress myself. Hey, I can buy whatever I want. But instead of using those designer logos as a crutch to your style, you should actually take some time to develop your own unique personal style. You should not be focusing on the brand or the logo. Instead, focus on the quality, the fit, the way that it looks. For example, this shirt right here could be designer and cost $1,000, or it could be from today's video sponsor, Fandy, that you can find on Amazon for a very affordable price. And man, it feels buttery smooth. It fits really well. It's got a nice relaxed fit to it. This, I am excited to wear this on a summer night. I love the way that it fits and I love the fabric as well. Who Fanny has some incredible pieces that you can find on Amazon that I'm gonna link below. For example, these polo shirts. These feel so nice. I love the detailing. I love the elastic on the cuff. I love the way that it feels. I like the details. The fabric feels high-end without the high-end price tags and without the crazy big logos. This corduroy shirt that I'm wearing right now comes in so many different colors and you can get it on Amazon Prime shipped to your place within two days. I even got this two-piece linen set because spring is around the corner, I'm so excited to be able to wear stuff like this again. And as you guys can tell, your boy is pasty white. I need some sun and I'm so excited to finally be able to go out Enjoy the beaches, enjoy the pool time. And this is the best time to do spring shopping. Things aren't sold out yet. You're gonna be able to find all your sizes, your favorite colors, all in a very affordable price tag. I gotta be real with you guys. As someone who actually makes clothing, like my pieces here from ATOS, I know how difficult it is to create an incredible product that delivers, that has high quality at a low affordable price point. And Fandy, I gotta hand it to them. They killed it. It feels really, really nice and it doesn't break the bank. And that's why I wanna make sure that I'm putting you guys on because this brand is killing it. And if you use my code right here, you get 30% off your order. So an even better price. Check out that first link below and enjoy your shopping. Next on the list, something that your boy used to wear all the time the super high quiff hairstyle. I'm 5'9", I was actually 6'2 with my high quiff, all right? Jokes aside, it's just not a very trendy hairstyle at the moment. You know, back in the day, perfectly groomed hairstyles, that's what was trendy. Nowadays, if you pay attention to it, it's actually careless, carefree, messy, curly, wavy hairstyles. That's what's trendy, that's what's popular. Let's go back to jeans. I already talked about skinny jeans, but I haven't mentioned overly distressed jeans. They have holes, they have frayed edges or, you know, other signs of like wear and tear that are not natural. Literally looks like you fought a bear 
and you lost. They're obviously not for a formal setting. They're very casual, like maybe too casual, and that's a problem in itself. But also, they're just not trendy. They're just not cool. And like the skinny jeans, they were trendy for a little bit, maybe around the same time, actually, with the blown out knees. You would see them all over Instagram. You would see them all over Pinterest. I used to post them myself. I used to think they were cool, and they were. But nowadays, it's either a baggy pant, if you want to be on trend, if you want to be fashion forward, let's say, or just a nice tailored fit, that's what you should be going for. Next on the list is clashing patterns. Now, when you wear too many patterns together, they clash, they compete with each other, and they create this confusing, overwhelming look. It's distracting. It takes away from the overall aesthetic of the outfit. It lacks cohesiveness. It's challenging to find patterns that actually complement each other and create this harmonious outfit. It's doable but you have to be a pro at it. I've seen a lot of models pull it off at runway shows when they've been styled by the best stylists in the world. It's doable, but for the everyday guy, I would definitely stay away from putting too many patterns together because it's too busy. It can be chaotic and it's hard for the eye to focus on one element of the outfit, which creates a sense of confusion and almost discomfort for you to look at that outfit. All right, guys, this next one, I got I got to pick on some of you, all right? Actually, I don't know if you guys wear this. I've only seen a few people wear them. I'm talking about the split toe shoes. I don't care how much you paid for your Maison Margiela tabby shoes. People are trying to do too much these days. Look, I'm all for trying new things. Look at my hair, I'm trying something new. Right, trying to stand out, I get it. You wanna stand out from the pack, but this one doesn't make it to the list of cool standout pieces. It screams try hard. Next on the list is sports jerseys. Now, before you attack me, I'm just talking about sports jerseys as a fashion item outside of like game night, outside of you actually going to a game. Unfortunately, as much as I like sports, as much as I appreciate sports, sports jerseys can just be seen as bro-y, right? As like a guy from the frat house who's wearing a sports jersey. That's what it's looked at. Unless of course you can style it in an incredible way, which I've seen done, but again, very difficult to pull off. Next on the list, I actually have a funny story about this one, facial piercings, mostly eyebrow piercing and then the septum piercing. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda like guys that have uh, a, a nose piercing here sometimes. It can look really good depending on your facial you know, structure, on your bones. But your boy one time when I was maybe like 16, 17, came this close to getting a tongue piercing. I'm not even joking, guys. Can you believe it? When I was about 16, 17, one of my friends was like, yo, let's get a tongue piercing. Let's get it, man. It's so cool. And it was cool back in the day. And I was like, all right, let's do it. And then the day before I was supposed to get it, I texted him, I'm like, bro, I'm not gonna get it. He's like, oh, you're chickening out? I'm like, yeah, I am. I'm just not gonna get it. So he got it. I'm so glad. I'm so, so glad I didn't get it, that tongue piercing. I don't know, man. If I had pictures of me with a tongue piercing, I would have. I don't know what I would've done. The next item that's on this list that you should not be wearing is big designer belts. The ones that have the big, big logo. It kind of goes hand in hand with the other tip about not wearing designer all over. It's tacky, it's flashy, and it's literally like right in the middle of your body. It's just like, here's Gucci, right? Here's this big designer belt. Look at it, everyone look at it. It's just not the vibe, it's not very cool. And of course, this one had to be on the list. Look, I love UFC. I used to do jujitsu back in the day. I was super into it, but I am proud to say that I never owned a tap out shirt. The big tap out shirts with all the logos and designs and graphics just don't look good. Again, they give off that like bar fight vibe that you're not trying to go for. You're trying to look cool. You're trying to be handsome. That's really all it is. And the tap out branding is everything but cool. So definitely stay away from that. Guys, check out that first link below. Get your Koofendi items and use my code to get 30% off. And if you wanna see the seven style mistakes that 99% of men make, check out this video that I posted right here because you will find out that maybe, just maybe, you're making those same mistakes.